Universe. Hi, this is Jacob L. In this episode of the Science and Philosophy Discussions video series, I'm going to share my design for a real plasma gun. It's based around a ceramic tube. At the forward end of the tube, there's a series of copper coils wound to act as a linear induction motor that creates a forward rolling magnetic field, like you can see here like a regular linear induction motor, and at the base of the device there's two copper bars that are slightly closer at one end than the other, and they're meant to act as a plasma rail gun. So, like a regular rail gun except with hot gas as the projectile. So an electric arc is ignited between the two rails, and this allows high current circuit to dump through the plasma arc and through the rails, and this creates magnetic fields that force the force it down the rails and out into the other chamber as it exits the end of the railgun section it aerodynamic forces cause it to expand like this and form into a toroidal vortex ring of plasma this is a drawing that i made to show you what a toroidal vortex ring looks like you can look up online smoke rings or toroidal vortex rings and try to get an idea of how they are. It's a pretty simple thing once you understand it, but it's just a, a donut-shaped ring of spinning gas. So the instant after it comes out of the end of the railgun section, it's now a ring-shaped electrical conductor in the form of ionized gas, hot plasma, at the base end of the linear induction motor segment of the device. The linear induction motor section that the plasma ring is now in has rapidly changing forward rolling magnetic fields. So the rapidly changing magnetic fields induce current in any nearby conductor. The plasma is going to be the primary nearby conductor. Its ring shape means that it acts as a one loop electrical coil. So the current that's induced into the plasma ring causes it to heat and also generates a magnetic field from the plasma ring. The strong electrical current now flowing in the plasma ring gives off a powerful magnetic field that interacts with the magnetic field of the coils in the linear induction motor section. This causes the plasma ring to be accelerated down the length of the linear induction motor by the magnetic forces. If you have trouble understanding that part of it, please research how a linear induction motor works and it should become clear to you how that part of it works. The mechanical construction can be very simple and rugged and easily maintainable. At the base end, the rear end of the device, it has two parallel metal bars that have, they're pretty close to each other and near one end but not all the way at the end, there's a bump in them so they're slightly closer together to create a starting point for the electric arc so it always starts at the same spot. It might or might not be necessary to add augmenting coils to create magnetic fields in parallel with the magnetic fields of the two rails so that the plasma can be accelerated more strongly to create a stronger toroidal vortex. The two rails are housed inside of a strong ceramic tube like this to protect them mechanically and insulate them electrically. In front of that, the larger main ceramic tube extends out in front. The coils of the linear induction motor are wound over the top of the main ceramic tube, insulated copper wire coils. And over the top of that, a mixture of iron powder with epoxy is coated over the top of the linear induction motor coils. This is a type of magnetic shielding that's not electrically conductive, so it shields the outside from the magnetic field. Most of the magnetic field will be concentrated inside the barrel, and it increases the intensity of the magnetic fields inside the barrel, while also not absorbing any of the energy of the coils by allowing induced currents to be formed in it because it's not electrically conductive. So that's just magnetic shielding, basically. At the muzzle end of the device, it might be a good idea to add a mechanical shutter like this. It's not really necessary because the construction is so simple it would be very easy to clean. 
The very low weight of each shot would allow for extremely high muzzle velocities, even at relatively low energy. And the very simple mechanism would allow for a very, very high rate of fire. So it would almost be like firing a beam weapon at, you know, if it's firing at 10,000 rounds a minute or something. Even if each shot is not very powerful, and just packs a lot of heat, but isn't able to penetrate very far. If you can stack, you know, 50 rounds, 50 shots in one spot in a fraction of a second, you might have a weapon that can drill through a target like a plasma torch. So this was my first drawing of this design from 2010 when I first came up with this. Um, it shows a slightly different version than what I showed in the video, but this was the original version. Um, and I did this calculation here a long time ago, I found this in my notebook, but this is, I calculated, so if you had the plasma made from one cubic centimeter of air at 20 degrees Celsius, um, I calculated that was 0 0.00001201 kilograms of air. And I gave, for this experimental calculation, a very conservative 5 joules of kinetic energy, making it into the plasma. So I calculated the kinetic, en or the velocity, so if you had 5 joules, 1 cubic centimeter of air converted to plasma, that would be 2,881 meters per second, or roughly Mach 8.5. So even with pretty low kinetic energy, that plasma bolt is going to be going extremely fast. So I would like to actually build this. This is something that I've been wanting to build basically since I originally came up with the design. And I also have off and on thought about patenting it, but I'm not sure if it's worth trying to go through the cost of that or how difficult that really is to get a patent on something. I think I should get a working model first, anyway. Um, but whether I get a patent or not, uh, I would like to build it anyway, and if you would like to help me with that, I'm going to have a link in the video and in the video description to somewhere that you can go to donate money. I'm not sure if I'm going to set up a Patreon account and try to do it that way, or find something else. But anyway, I'll put that information in the video description.